By the end of this step-by-step -step tutorial, you will have your blog set up with Ghost on Google Cloud completely for free. We'll also configure Ghost newsletter functionality and business email like you at your domain in part two of this tutorial. It will be published on this channel soon, so consider subscribing not to miss that. This guide is beginner-friendly, so you don't need any previous experience or some specific skills, and you still are getting the same professional but easy-to-use platform as Ali Abdal is using for his own blog. Yes, it will take a couple of hours for the whole setup process, but you are literally saving hundreds of dollars here. There is a faster way to get you started in minutes with Ghost Pro, but it's not free. For your convenience, YouTube chapters will be below. There will be some copy-paste commands that I'll leave in the description of this video, as well as the link to a text version of this tutorial. Grab whatever you're drinking and let's get you started with your blog. To start a blog, you will need three things that I will cover in this video. First, a domain name, so people can get to your blog by typing its name into address bar instead of some weird AP address. Just imagine if apple.com was something like 17.253.144.10. It hurts even to say that aloud. A second thing you'll need – the platform that will be running your blog. Think of it as a software that will manage creating pages, storing your media, doing SEO and other important stuff. So you can focus on one exact thing – creating content. In this tutorial, we'll be using Ghost CMS or Content Management System, which comes with all the tools you would need to build a successful blog. It's stylish, blazing fast, has SEO and social built-in. Ghost is explicitly focused on doing one thing great, and that is publishing. And what's most important, it's free to install on your own server. Which brings us to the third element you need – hosting. That will keep all your blog files and serve blog pages to your visitors. For this tutorial, we'll be using Google Cloud, which has quite a generous forever free tier. And on top of that, you would probably want that cool-looking business email with your domain in it. I'll cover how to do that completely for free in part 2 of this tutorial. Moreover, we'll link that to your Gmail account, so you can use a familiar interface for your business mail. If any of that sounded complicated, don't worry, it's easier than it seems. You can get a free domain from .tk and free gnome registrars. Some notes here. These domains will work exactly like any other domain out there, but they are not registered in your name, so you can't transfer such domain to another registrar or sell it. They don't look professional. You probably won't get any support from free gnome if there are any issues. Free gnome is buggy. Let me show you. Here we are at freenome.com. I enter the domain name I'm looking for, and it shows as available. But when I give that a click, it's unavailable right now. If you run into this issue, just enter the full domain with dot and zone into the search bar and boom, you can get that now. Just make sure you select 12 months during the checkout. After that, you'll need to renew your domain every 12 months, which is done for free, and you get unlimited renews. Ok, I want to be completely honest with you here. Even though you can go for this completely free domain, just don't. Thing is, when your blog gets traction, starts ranking in search and gets a lot of visitors, the last thing you want is to get into any trouble with your domain name. And because a free domain is technically not licensed in your name, if at any point in future it will be somehow taken from you, there is nothing you can do. So instead, I want to introduce the cheapest domain registrar out there – Cloudflare. If you haven't heard anything about Cloudflare registering domains, that's because they don't have an aggressive marketing policy like GoDaddy or Namecheap. Why? Well, Cloudflare has no markup prices for domains they sell. You literally pay what they pay for a domain and that's it. $8.57 for a .com domain with the domain privacy included. 
But how about the dot-com deals for $5.98 at Namecheap or even $1 at IONOS? Well, that's first year only. Every subsequent year you are charged $14 plus dollars. And at the checkout you are obliged to pay for 2 plus years to qualify for such an offer. To summarize, here's a table of .com domain price at different registrars. You can probably save around a dollar by using cheap two years deal at one of the registrars and then transferring the domain to Cloudflare for subsequent years. But that's probably not worth the time spent. That's why I simply registered domain at Cloudflare. The process is very straightforward. And as you can see, your privacy is protected by Cloudflare. We'll return to the main setup later when we have our free Google Cloud instance up and running. Google gives $300 in free credits for new cloud customers for 90 days and has a forever free tier that we will be using. There is an asterisk here, but no worries, I'll walk you through, so there will be no surprises for you in future. Click Get Started, enter your account information, verify your phone, and enter billing details. Google will charge a small amount and return it immediately to verify your card. Even if you use some of the paid Google Cloud services, when your trial ends, there will be no auto charge. Anyway, right now we want to set up our free tier cloud instance. Complete the short survey here, it doesn't really matter what answers you choose. Google will provide some recommendations based on info you entered. Just skip that and head to Compute Engine. Enable Compute Engine API. Once it's ready, click Create Instance button at the bottom. Ok, here's a detailed article on what qualifies for free tier. And we want our instance to be within that limit so it stays free. What do we get at no extra cost? E2 micro VM instance, 3 US-based locations, 30 GB standard assistant disk, 1 GB per month network egress to all regions, excluding China and Australia. Back to the setup. Choose the name you want. I went with blog. Choose a free location. It has to be either US West 1, US Central 1, or US East 1. A general rule is to get a server closer to your visitors, but as all free locations are based in US and we are using a very optimized platform, this is not critical. I went with US East because it's a bit closer to Europe. As for the zone, leave a default one. For machine type, select E2 Micro, that's the one free. Next, in Boot Disk section, click on Change. Here select Ubuntu version 20.04 LTS, that is the one recommended for Ghost. Change disk size to 30GB and Boot Disk type to Standard Persistent Drive. And press Select to save changes. Scroll down to Firewall, allow both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Leave default networking parameters with premium network tier preselected. Do not change network tier to standard. It may seem cheaper, and it is, but if you do that, the free tier limit of 1 GB egress won't be applied and all the outbound traffic will be paid. Ok, here on the right side you'll see a monthly estimate. That's just an estimate and Google won't bill your free tier usage. Click Create and wait until the instance is ready. Ok, now our virtual machine is ready and we can proceed with the main configuration at Cloudflare. If you've bought domain with Cloudflare like I did, skip the next step. So, if you registered your domain with Freenome or any other registrar, there will be an additional step – changing domain name service to the ones provided by Cloudflare. First, enter or create and enter your account at Cloudflare, head to Websites, 
add a site. Select a free plan, skip the next step and you'll see the name service you'll need to change to. How to change name service depends on your registrar. For free now, head to My Domains, click on Manage Domain, click on Management Tools, then on Name Service and enter the name service provided by CloudSign. Press Change Name Service, wait for 15 to 30 minutes and press Check button back at the cloud flare. OK, we are in the DNS section in Cloudflare dashboard. Press Add Record, leave its type as it is, and copy external IP of your Google Cloud instance. Enter Add for the name and paste IP you copied as IPv4 address. Click Save. Next, add a new record. Change its type to CNAME. Name will be www. In the target field, write down your domain name. Enter your domain in the browser tab and it should be showing something like this. OK, now we are going to install Ghost. It's possible to do that by installing Ghost directly on a server using Terminal, which is not user-friendly, or by installing CyberPanel first to later configure Ghost in a simple interface. Even with CyberPanel, we will still have to use console, but no worries, it will be easy. Get back to Google Cloud Platform, press on the arrow next to SSH right here and select Open in a browser window. Copy-paste commands one by one. You can use either Ctrl-V or Command-V for Mac to paste or right mouse button click and selecting paste. Wait until each command is completed and then proceed to the next one. Once again, I'll leave all the comments in the description down below and in the article. First, we want to update our operating system components. When the update is completed, we need to restart the server. Here, let it reboot for a minute and press retry to enter console again. Now we'll install CyberPanel. Copy-paste this command and follow on-screen installation process. We want to select 1 – Install CyberPanel, 1 – Install with Open Lightspeed, which is free, Install Full Service, enter capital Y, for Remote MySQL enter capital N, Press Enter to proceed with the latest version. For security reasons, I would recommend either generating a random or specifying your own password. Here I'll go with the random. If you go with a random one, as it's shown here, it will be provided to you when installation is completed. For Memcached, enter capital Y. The same for Redis. Watchdog will let you know if your server is down, but only after you have set up email, which we'll go through later in part 2. And this is a beta feature, so it may be not that reliable. So it's up to you. Either enter yes with a capital Y or no and press enter. Installation will stop and you can take a break, as it will last around an hour. When installation is complete, it will show us some stats, our username, which is admin by default, and password. Underneath that it says that Google Cloud Platform detected, that we'll need to configure our firewall for things to work, and that our port 25 is blocked, so we can't send mail using our server. And these are all the things we'll address. To set up the rules for firewall, head to Google Cloud Platform, Press navigation menu icon in the top left corner. Scroll down to networking. Here select VPC network, firewall. Enter the name you like. At source IP enter 0.0.0.0 forward slash 0. In protocols and ports select TCP and enter 1890 in the field next to it. After that press create. Now when you enter your cloud instance IP followed by column 1890 in a browser tab, you'll see CyberPanel login window. Log in to CyberPanel using admin account and your password, navigate to website, create website. Select default package, choose admin as an owner, 
and enter your domain without www. Enter your email, select PHP 7.4, check SSL and DKIM support. Click Create Website. Next, in the main menu on the left, head to SSL, hostname SSL. Choose your site here and press Issue SSL. Now you can enter CyberPanel through HTTPS, so no more browser warnings. Finally, we are ready to install Ghost. In CyberPanel, navigate to Docker Manager, Manage Images menu on the left. Press Install Docker. When installation is finished, type Ghost in the search bar. You'll need the one with checkmark. That is official. In text, select latest or the one with the highest number without alpine suffix and click pull. Once that's done, click create container button above on the right. Select whichever version you've chosen previously and press create. Enter the name, select admin as a known. For a memory limit, I've set 512 megabytes. We have 1 GB of memory available for our entire E2 Micro Google Cloud instance, and we need some RAM for Cloud Panel and Ubuntu on top of the RAM for our blog. So 512 to 768 MB for Ghost will be that sweet spot. It's not WordPress. This amount of memory should be more than enough for small to medium-sized blocks. For port, use the same 2368 as you see on the left. Leave values below as they are. Scroll down and press Add More. Type URL in the left box and your blog address starting with https colon forward slash forward slash in the right. Scroll down again. Add map volumes and these values. Make sure you enter your own domain right here. And press Create Container. You will be redirected on success. Here press Settings and check Start on the reboot. Scroll down and press Save. Now press Start using the button on the left. There is one more step you'll need to do. Return to Google Cloud, VPC Network, Firewall. Create one more rule similar to the one we've created previously. This time enter TCP port 2368. Save this rule. Navigate to Compute Engine section, VM instances and press SSH. Copy-paste the following command. Enter the password and press I to start editing the file. Scroll down and paste the following at the very bottom of the file. Press Escape button, type column WQ and press Enter to save changes. Now go to CyberPanel, Websites, List Websites. Here click Manage, scroll down, click Rewrite Rules and paste the following code. Press Save Rewrite Rules. Now you can finally open your blog in a browser using your domain name. To finish Ghost setup, open your domain name forward slash Ghost. Enter blog title, author's name, email and password. That's it! You can start posting to your blog right away. As for the mail and newsletter configuration, that will be in part 2 of this tutorial, which will be published soon. If it already is, the link will be in the description to this video. If you found this tutorial useful, please click that like button for an algorithm so more people can get value from this video. And thanks for your support! If you have any questions left, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. And see you in the next videos!